sorghum has the capacity to grow more efficiently than corn in the West and High Plains, where irrigation is a harder commodity to come by than the land to grow it on. However, maximizing the crop's potential for biofuel production has proven to be a challenge. Market Journal's Bill Dodd recently caught up with UNL Associate Professor Dr. James Schnabel to get an inside look at how his team is trying to overcome those challenges through genetics. Bill, tell us what you've got your eye on this week. Thanks, Troy. A sorghum is a very efficient plant when it comes to water consumption, heat resistance, and low seed cost. In fact, the team at UNL, in conjunction with several other universities, are utilizing a grant from the U.S. Department of Energy in order to crack the genetic code of sorghum in order to maximize its potential for biofuel. Sorghum is our nation's third most plentiful cereal crop and could potentially be a key player in the biofuels industry. However, there are challenges involved in making sorghum a viable candidate to be a key crop in biofuel production. The biggest key to doing so is to pinpoint the functionality of some of sorghum's roughly 30,000 genes. Enter James Schnabel, Associate Professor of Agronomy and Horticulture at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. The team he has put in place are currently working to crack the genetic code in sorghum with the use of a $2.7 million three-year grant from the U.S. Department of Energy to develop an efficient method for characterizing the functions of genes in sorghum. So uh, sorghum uh, actually already has a lot of advantages when you look at it as a biofuel crop, which is one of the reasons DOE uh, put so much uh, funding into supporting it. Uh, so DOE and all of us should be very concerned about uh, biofuels driving up the cost of the, the food we eat every day. Uh, sorghum is able to grow on more marginal land where it's not competing with corn. It's able to grow in areas with less water. It's able to grow in uh, areas with high heat stress. So uh, the goal with most biofuels crops is to be able to grow on this marginal land that uh, either is not being used for crop production right now or is being used for crop production with extremely low yields. So my research overall uh, focuses a lot on linking uh, variation in the genome to variation in phenotype or in traits in both corn and sorghum. This particular grant from the Department of Energy is focused on developing new methods for figuring out which of the 30,000 genes in sorghum we should focus on using a combination of machine learning and crop modeling. In the greenhouses at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln's Innovation Campus, master's student Mackenzie Swiner tends to the research plants. They're watered two times a week, with half the plants being analyzed for phenotypic changes over the course of treatment, while the others are sampled at the V5 stage for delivery to Hudson Alpha in Alabama for RNA extraction. Here, the team is relying on reverse genetics to understand the details about how plants perceive and react to their environments in order to develop varieties tailored to grow in varying climates and conditions around the country. Now, like me, you may be wondering, what exactly is reverse genetics, and how is that applied to sorghum? So reverse genetics uh, is a fancy word, but essentially it's uh, the geneticist's way of figuring out uh, what an individual gene does. Uh, this will be very familiar to anyone who has tried to figure out uh, how an engine or any complex piece of machinery works, you break something and you see what happens. Uh, so reverse genetics is you pick one gene, you break that gene, and you see how it affects the, uh, the traits and the phenotype of the resulting uh, plant. Uh, a lot of this process will just use natural uh, genetic variation, but ultimately to figure out whether we're right about the function of a gene, we do have to go in and break that gene. To do that, we use a process called uh, genome editing, which uses a protein called Cas9 to go in and make a targeted uh, break in the DNA. Schnabel's team isn't alone in their venture. A project this big requires a bit of outside assistance. As it happens, James says he feels very fortunate that he's been able to orchestrate a team of institutions from across the Corn Belt to create an innovative merger of expertise that is in turn creating a systemic method for selecting which genes it makes sense to investigate. Um, so yeah, I was uh, fortunate to be able to put together a, a really skilled team at a bunch of different institutions. So we've got a statistician at Iowa State, uh, a guy working with uh, satellite data at the University of Illinois, uh, a, a fellow developing new hyperspectral sensors for measuring the composition of plants without damaging them at Purdue University, uh, two scientists at Michigan State, including another uh, maize biologist, as well as a woman who analyzes drone data to make measurements of uh, sorghum plants from flying UAVs over fields. Uh, and it was really uh, important to be able to pull together this team because a lot of the research we're doing in this grant requires uh, sets of expertise that really haven't existed in one uh, field or one discipline or one department before. The implications of this research go far beyond making sorghum a viable option for biofuel production. In fact, by the year 2050, our planet's population is on pace to top 9.7 billion inhabitants. Well, this could put a strain on the world's food supply, and if successful, the applications of this research could extend to other crops, making it possible to grow food in regions that have historically had unsuitable climates to sustain meaningful crop development. Plants have between, say, 20 and 40,000 genes in their genome. 
but only a very small number of those genes, uh, say a couple of hundred to a couple of thousand, have actually been characterized to the point where we know what that gene does in terms of how it affects the uh, traits of the organism in different environments. Uh, so what we're doing here in sorghum is trying to develop this method by uh, using machine learning and crop modeling to figure out which genes it makes sense to focus our research efforts on. If it works in sorghum, I have a lot of confidence it'll also work in corn. The two species are very closely related. It will probably also work in even more distantly related species like uh, wheat or soybeans or rice. This endeavor is the first of its kind to couple artificial intelligence and plant science. Schnabel says that this combination has started gaining more momentum in the past year and a half, and with this new innovation taking off with researchers, we can expect to see this method open doors to new opportunities in plant genetics for years to come. And Troy, that's what I got my eye on this week. For now, I'll send it back to you.